Welcome back. This is a Clever Artist Show with Shirley Jackson. I'd like to introduce my guest this evening. His, I call him Chef Dennis, although he's <laughs> not really a chef. Not really. Not really. So what it entails, but he makes the most amazing food. We've had him at our store for several different events, and each time we had people begging for him to come back. Now, why is that? They like the food. <laughs> <laughs> they love the food. The food is good. That's it? Well, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> pretty much it. So We have a good time. So, how seriously, what got you started in, in cooking? What got you interested? Well, that's a good question. Uh, years ago, actually, um, all my, my aunts, my mother, my grandmother, everybody cooked. I wasn't interested in doing anything but eating because I was a kid. But as I got older, I realized that um, I needed to change something in my diet and for my family. Um, so I started looking for alternative ways of doing that and living better and being healthy because I lost a lot of family members to health issues. At the time, I didn't realize those health issues were diet related. It took some while, it took a time to do that. But when I began to understand that, my grandmother died at 62. And I thought that was old because I was a young teenager. Now I'm over 62. That's not young. <laughs> no, you're wishing you hadn't <laughs> I mean, thought that's, that, right? that's not old, so I, I wish, <laughs> you know. So I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to do a difference. So as I began to look for solutions, I was invited to a dinner party. And my wife at the time says, uh, we're invited to this pots and pans party. <laughs> I said, we already have pots and pans. She says... Like banging well, pots and pans together? Yeah, she says, well, you know, not, we used to, there was a time, during that time, pot was not a good thing to say, but. Oh, like clanking on the head, pots and pans? No, well, it, was, it was a different kind of pot. But anyway, we moved past that. So uh, when I went to this party, reluctantly, uh, I saw a little bit of, I saw a lot of what you're going to see a little bit of here. And uh, it made a difference in my life because it really changed my life and my health and the health of my family. Um, so I decided I wanted to introduce this to as many people as possible, uh, not being a chef, but having tools that would make a difference in your health. So that's what I'm doing. And I love that. And it's expanded into other things like uh, alternative health products and homeopathic and naturopathic products right. and some, some mixes and seasoning that I also offer when I do events outside. Now, you actually you actually take what you have into people's homes. Am I right? You're okay. right, you're correct. But you and so if I remember correctly, you actually cook them a full course dinner. Nine course meal, yes. That's From a scratch. lot of food. It's a lot of food. I hope they're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or we got a lot of leftovers, right? <laughs> they keep the leftovers. <laughs> They keep the leftovers but you also i mean you also do it you also uh have these uh dinners in your home yes i do and call them wellness seminars right right and i know we've talked on several occasions about your your food and and my husband and i had talked about it as well is that um we've had quite a few people from the last event asked if you'd be willing to give up your recipes and I said, well, I'm sure he would. I said, you, you talked about that, was writing down the recipes and giving them out to people. But um, you're also going to start a new venture here yes. at Artistic Treasures. Yes, yes. Well, why don't you tell us about that? Yes. Well, you and I have talked about it. And uh, what we're looking at doing is using one of the rooms here at Artistic Treasures to uh, set up and do dinners, uh, cooking seminars, and wellness seminars where people can come in, invited uh, public can come in and experience the health cooking and eating uh, from scratch. So people understand that food is medicine. Well, here's the other thing too. I know when it comes to, I mean, I, I'm I'm a plus size gal. I'm, I'm not a oh. little shrimpy person, you know? So, I mean, I like food, I like to eat. Um, but because of health reasons, I'm trying to learn myself mm -hmm. on how to eat the proper things and, you know, hopefully lose some weight at the same time and actually become more healthy than what I really am right now. 
So I know that you and I have discussed this on, on several, you know, on several lengths. Um, it's not so much of the, the, it's what the type of food that you're cooking and what you put into it. it when most people, when we say it's healthy for you, the first reaction they go is, yuck, it's gross. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's nasty. I'm not eating it. I'm sorry for this. I mean, seriously. They, That's true. They talk, about, they talk about diet or sugarless, you know, candy yeah. and all that. And I've, I'm sorry, but I've tasted some of that. And, I, and I'm driving down the road, and I just go, that's the worst candy I ever had. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I look at my husband going, where's the nearest trash can? Because it's, <laughs> I don't care if I paid $10. It's going out the window. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I understand. It's horrible. But I've tasted your chili. And, I mean, I have to say, I, 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 have to, you know, I, mean, I do make some good chili. But when I tasted yours, it, I was completely stunned. It completely outdid everything that I have ever been taught or even books I have read on how to make the best chili. I mean, there are recipes all over the internet on the world's best chili. But every time that you have been here or we have done an event together and you have made your chili, mm -hmm. people keep coming back for more and more because they keep saying it's the best chili they've ever eaten. Yes, yes. So what's your secret? The pans. <laughs> <laughs> the pans, in a word, the pans. Uh, the, the pans do something very unique. And one of the things people don't understand when they're, when they're looking at health and being healthy is that food has a certain temperature that you have to cook at. That temperature is between 160 degrees and 195 degrees. And when you're cooking in that temperature range, you're keeping the vitamins, your minerals, your nutrition, your taste, your texture, your color, your flavor in your food. When you exceed 195 degrees, you destroy those things. You begin to destroy those things. And so, in other words, burning it is not an option. <laughs> burning, <laughs> burning is not an option. No, <laughs> it's, not, it's not an option. That, that doesn't do it. I, I say that because we, we have, I, I mean, I was raised on, on cooking in cast iron skillets, uh -huh. you know, and every once in a while you'll get a family member that goes, you know, and we'll say, do you, you know, hey, we're going to cook some steak tonight or we're going to cook this. And they go, burn it. And I'm like, seriously, <laughs> where, where, did, where did you come from? Yes, because, yes. Because yes. I cannot, for myself, I mean, literally, I mean, from burnt toast to burnt anything, I cannot stand. the. It's like it has no flavor. It's just that's all you taste is a burnt. You don't taste anything else. So that's why I said you, you don't want to burn. Yeah. Well, when we had the last <laughs> event here. I had several people come by, and I was doing hot dogs that day for some of the kids and what, whatever. And um, I had several people say, burn my hot dogs. And I, and I burned them because they want them burned. But I'm thinking, I mean, when people begin to understand what healthy food really is, is they have a different opinion. One of the things I do on my dinners and my wellness seminars is a lot of education about health because... And what it really means, you have the medical definition of health, and then you have the natural alternative definition for health. And Hippocrates, the father of medicine, centuries ago, said, let food be thy medicine, and let medicine be thy food. And yeah. I believe that. You know, even the scripture talks about, uh, you know, would that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Right. I believe that. I believe right. in that. So... You know, the cookware that I use, the pots and pans that I use are extraordinary. They look like anything else, but they don't cook like anything else. And the proof is what you're saying about the chili. No heartburn, gas, and indigestion. People with GERD and acid reflux can usually eat these foods out of this cookware and not have a reaction. Now, I have to admit, I love spicy food. I mean, I love Me too. <laughs> chili. I love... I mean, I'll even put Tabasco sauce <laughs> most of the time in it, or salsa. Salsa is my all-time favorite. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Mexican food, anything that has to do with spice, I love it to a point. To a point. But I, but I do love it. Um, the one thing I noticed about your pots and pans, they don't look anything like mine. You, you can say that all you want, but they don't look like mine. <laughs> Mine are, mine look really old and and they look like they need to retire. <laughs> now, how long? You know, I mean, seriously, how long have you had these pots and pans? About ten years. Serious, ten yeah, years. Yeah. 
and I, I use them daily. These are my own. This, this is what my wife and I use to cook in. This is what we're cooking exclusively. Um, they, if it looks like I'm a cook, it's because I have the greatest tools that work. And all people are not alike. All waterless cookware is not alike. And this is called waterless, greaseless cookware. So we cook all the vegetables without water, all the meats without grease, oils, and fats, and salts. We leave all of that out. It cooks in its own natural juices, and it cooks fast. We got, you're going to see an example of this. We're going to cook fast. We're going to do some foods here for you. We're going to do some juicing. One of the healthiest things you can do for yourself is to juice. Um, I usually say to people, you can either eat it raw or you can juice it. Many, many experts recommend not cooking food because food usually cooks at 212 degrees, which exceeds the 195 that we were talking mm -hmm. about. Right. When you add water to food, or if you put it in the microwave, you have just shot right past the, the safe nutrition point of food. So even though you started with healthy food, you didn't end with healthy food, but you didn't know it. Well, you know, I think that's part part of the problem that we have is, I, I mean, not part of the problem, but as a society and the technology, you know, is out there. Mm -hmm. we, we, you have YouTube. Of course, we put videos on YouTube from the store and um, websites and, you know, so on and so forth. The problem is, is that you have one person, it's like playing a game of telephone. You have one person going, oh, I heard this, and then it yeah. goes on and on. So by the time you get down to the 10th or 12th person, yeah. it's completely diluted. So the next thing you hear is, well, I heard to put that into a gallon of water and boil the living daylights out there because there, until there ain't nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's actually the worst thing you can do, I mean, as far as health-wise. Okay. You have started making your own seasonings, from what I understand. Yes, I have. I have. Um, and the seasoning is herbs and spices with uh, some flour and um, cornstarch. These are special seasoning. It took me several years to create this. The punch that many times you've tried to taste it and many people trace, they, they just absolutely love. It's very refreshing. It's not super sweet. It is one of the things I do. I have them at every event that I do and the chili at every event that I do simply because I want people to experience what healthy really tastes like and what it is. So uh, this, this is what I do. Um, and we have this for, for people to try and sample all the time. Well, I know I've tried your punch and I'm a diabetic myself. So okay. I know that when it comes to uh, drinks, especially drinks that have any kind of sweetener in it, um, I have to be very, very careful. I, I mean, including fruit, mm -hmm. um, because it can take my sugar level and go sky high. And the next thing you know, I'm just walking around looking like I'm drunk, you know, and everybody's looking at me like, what's and you wrong? Don't drink. And I don't drink. And everybody's <laughs> looking at me like, what's wrong with her? Did she get drunk? And I'm like, no, I don't drink. And, 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 and then all of a sudden they come crashing down and going, okay, good night, you know, and I pass out on everybody because I've literally went from one extreme yes. to the other. Yes. And yeah. I hear a lot of people who are in the same, pro you know, have the same problem is they're diabetics. Mm -hmm. And we can't seem to get that, you know, because we're always told that our A1C, our sugar level needs to be maintained. And unfortunately, because of the foods that we eat yeah. or drink, you know, we have a tendency to go from one extreme to the other. Then I go into the doctors and he goes, he looks at me and says, oh, I see we're not eating correctly. Um, let's see, you got a high here, then it goes low, then it goes another high. What are you eating? And, and so I, I started making a diary. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, over what I'm eating and drinking, just so I can show the doctor and to figure out what's causing the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because the last thing I want to be, you know, the last thing, I'm not on insulin. Right. Good. But if I'm not careful, I it will be, be yes. because I'm not, you know, because I'm not doing what I should be doing. So when you and I started talking about the juices and the foods and, and, 
and I've learned a lot to the point where I go th started going through my cabinet going, oh, nope, that's not any good. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> oh, that's not. And then I donate it to my daughter who's skinny as a rail and she can eat anything she wants. <laughs> so I donate it to her, you know, and the grandkids. And then, uh, and then I start making a list of the things that I should be eating, mm -hmm. and I've actually noticed a change. Yes, yes, and there would be. I mean, it's difficult. A lot of people are trying to do the right thing. They're trying to eat right. But like one of the things you're saying, Shirley, there, there's so much information out there, and there's a lot of contradictory information out there. So people really don't know. And, and to be honest with you, many doctors have no clue. They just have no clue. That's not part of their forte. That's not what they learn. Uh, they're in a medical society where the pharmaceutical company is the head of that society, and there's drugs and surgery, surgery and drugs. When you start dealing with alternative and natural products, which is what I do and what I talk about and what I share with people, I mean, my wife would tell you she gets a little irk with me sometimes because I can spend 10, 12 or more hours a day just researching information about some natural. I have sources and resources. So you spend more time researching than you pay attention to your wife? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do. But it's important yeah. to me. And she'll say, well, you don't have time to read this. You don't have time. No, well, I bet your you know, wife is... I, seriously, I bet there's a lot of women. Your wife is spoiled. I mean, no offense, but That's she's what she says. she's spoiled, really. That's I what mean, she says. you 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 are a fantastic cook, and and not only are you a fantastic cook, but you also do the dishes. I mean, you yeah, I literally do. will clean up and do the dishes. So there's a lot of women out there going. Does he I have do a brother? <laughs> Does he have a brother? Yeah, yeah. but he doesn't do and dishes. He, he doesn't do dishes. <laughs> He doesn't cook? Well, he cooks. He doesn't have a choice. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, you know, and it's a shame that a lot of men, you know, seriously, you know, uh, a lot of men don't take the time to actually help, you know, cook or to help wash dishes or anything. Society has trained us for many, many years that that is a woman's job. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, and, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, if, if, you know, if a man comes up and says, I'm a chef, that means he must work in a restaurant, you know, or <laughs> there's something else wrong with this guy, uh, either mentally or, you otherwise. know. Yeah, yeah. Or otherwise. And the, the thing is, is that, you know, what I really love about all this is, is that um, if you're willing to learn, anybody can do this and actually become, you know, actually become your own chef. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is really easy. Yeah, it is. And like you said, um, with any artist, it has to do with the tools that you use. It does. It does. Okay. So what do you have here for us today? Well, these make me look really good. And what I'm going to do, uh, over here I'm going to do a pizza. I'm going to do some veggies. I have two veggies vegetables here. I have uh, carrots, fresh carrots. These are all fresh. I only do fresh food. It is extremely rare that I do frozen food. One of the biggest hindrances to most people's health who are trying to do the right thing is processed food, pre-packaged food. They contain a lot of chemicals. Uh, one of the biggest misnomers that people have is that if it says diet, low cal, low fat, light, that is healthier. But and it's it, just the opposite. It literally is just right, the opposite. Right, right. Because I've read some of those packages, and the sodium yeah. content is, I mean, out the roof. Not only the sodium, but when you start dealing with low cal and, and low fat and things like that, what they have done, and I'm just adding some water in here, but I told you in the beginning that this is waterless cookware, so we're not going to cook with the water. Okay. Remember, do you remember the boiling point of water, boiling temperature of water? Yes. 212 degrees boils water, 195 degrees cooks your food. Anything over that kills your food. So I'm going to pour the water out. We're going to cook this food in this pan. So you'll see how simple it is. Now, each one of these pans has a uh, temperature gauge. Okay. In the temperature gauge, you see the red, white, and blue. The white zone is 160 to 195. So I'm going to start by opening this. Oh. You can see the light through the hole. Yeah, so for people like me that don't really know the temperature, and I just look at it and go, oh, I think it's done. All right, here's what happens. <laughs> now, I'm going to turn this on okay. medium heat. All right. Now, this is an induction burner. This fits on gas, electric, uh, flat top. It doesn't matter. Any source of heat. Okay. When the pan whistles, and it will whistle when the food is done. When oh. it whistles, 
food is ready. You close so it up, turn it off. That's similar to um, uh, what my grandmother and my mother used to use to do canning, the pressure cooker. Similar, except okay. there's no pressure. These heat okay. from the bottom up, the awesome. top down, the sides in all at the same time. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is a pizza. And I'm going to work this. I'm going to just put this in here. I did a cake over here. I'm going to do the pizza over here. And I've already set this. Now I got a generic pizza here, pizza dough, from a place called Save A Lot. <laughs> Some of you probably heard of it. 49 cents a package. So well, there we go. One and a half package in, one and a half package in here. I'm going to put a little oil in here. Now this pan is cold, so okay. we're starting with a cold pan. Now, why would you start with a cold pan? Because I don't need it hot. Okay. For the pizza. Well, and I, I do have recipes. I, I, I just thought so I'd ask. I'm just going to spread this around with my fingers. Don't worry about my hands. I watched them yesterday. <laughs> So, so there's no germs or nothing included in this. We'll just let you know now. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is uh, so we got the pizza dough in there, uh, pizza, okay. the, the extra virgin olive oil. I always recommend extra virgin so you stay away from the, the trans fats and the regular oil. Right. I'm going to put the dough in here. Okay. I'm uh, just going to spread this around using my clean hands again. Yep. And uh, I trust you. <laughs> I did this no germs or nothing like that, no, you know. No germs. No germs. I fed the chicken. You fed the chicken before you got here, right? <laughs> All right. So here we go. And we have a lot of fun on the dinners and the shows that we do as well. So. Do you ask your guests to do this for you? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> I have a tendency I just to do thought, that. I make them wash their hands up. I just thought I would ask. <laughs> and I have a generic <laughs> sauce. This is spaghetti sauce. Oh, now look at you. I make mine from scratch. I know. <laughs> and We'll discuss that later. <laughs> just going to spread this around really quick and easy on the, on okay. the dough. All right. And the pan is cold, so we're not preheating it like an oven. Usually, a preheated oven, somewhere between four and five hundred degrees to do a pizza. Okay. Did I tell you the pans work really fast? No, that part I, that part I did not know. They they all work really fast, so they cook quickly. When you hear the whistle, that means the food is ready. Oh, that's right. Oh no, you did say that because I said it was like a pressure cooker. Yes. Okay. So if you're getting the whistle, and I got my cheese. You can put it as little. You guys like a little cheese, a lot of cheese. Ah, a lot. <laughs> let's go for let's go for the whole thing. How how's that? You can put it whatever you like. We'll go for a cheesy day. <laughs> put a little more cheese on here. Sure. Just dump the whole package on there. We don't mind. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> Kyle's won't miss it. All right. <laughs> That's looking delicious already. And instead of pepperoni, because I didn't have any. <laughs> I'm gonna put some uh, salami. We improvised. Yes, you had some in your kitchen. Yes. So, by the way, you have up to eight minutes. You have up to eight minutes to let your pan whistle without worrying about it burning up, drying out, or boiling over. Okay. How much water do we have in the pan? You remember? Actually, you drain the water out. Drain the water out. We're cooking without water. If you notice the temperature gauge, the thermometer, the thermometer is showing right at the 195 degrees. It's, you know, it's funny because... So far, so good. Oh, that looks delicious. Right, now I'm going to set this, turn on the heat now. Okay. And I'm going to set it at 300 degrees. Y'all are missing this. He's making it as hungry. And cook it for 15 <laughs> minutes. 15 minutes. That's 15 it minutes. for the pizza. So the vegetables are done, so I'm going to close that up. Okay. And I'm going to turn this off. Now, you know what's funny is that um, I have never have been a, a person who, who actually likes cooked veggies. Um, my husband will tell you that when I eat veggies, it, they're always raw. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've, and, I, and I don't know why that is, but I've been that way ever since I was a kid. My mother just, you know, thought I was just weird, you know, strange because... 
she would cook, you know, she would cook all these veggies, and I would look at her and go, can I just get it out of the fridge and eat it raw? Because that's just the way I loved it. So It may have been a texture thing. But this thing. smells really good. It may well, have been a texture thing. Well, no, no, because, I mean, I grew up in Oregon. It, they moved to Texas 20 years ago, and, I, you know, uh, my husband's military, so we traveled everywhere. Okay. So... Okay. Now, if you notice the temperature gauge, it's right at 195 degrees. Remember, the pan does it itself. Right. You don't have to worry about it. So it's not killing your food, your nutrients, your vitamins, your minerals, your color, your taste, your texture. So for people like me, it's dummy proof. People dummy-proof. like you, it's okay. dummy proof. Yes. And it makes me look that's, real good. It makes you look real good. So that's where I <laughs> don't need the. That's good. where I don't need the cooking for dummies, Ex book, right? Exactly. Oh, okay. Now this is our <laughs> juicer. Now this is not a toy. This is a real juicer. Now, what I'm going to do here is juice all of these vegetables. We're going to make an excellent, yeah, healthy louder. juice. We're going to make an excellent, healthy juice. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. <laughs> Everything is going to, all of the fiber is going to come out of the back. All of the juice is going to come out of the front. Okay. Food is medicine. So what I'm going to do. So you don't have to peel it or take off You don't have to peel it. it. You don't have to take anything off of it. Just put it in. right through. You're going to get all the vitamins and minerals and nutrients out of the food because we're not killing the food. We're not using high heat or anything like that. Well, I don't know. It looks like you're killing it to me, but I mean, <laughs> I mean inside the juicer rather. <laughs> yes, a little bit. I'm glad it just doesn't say ouch. <laughs> and with the magnesium and the celery and the natural okay. sodium, this is really good for you. The apples have vitamin A, vitamin C in it. Have the watermelon with all of the lycopene. The lycopene is very healthy. Antioxidants. The carrots are high in vitamin C. Luton, which is good for your eyes and your hair, things like that. Right. I mean, you ever see a bald rabbit? No, I can't okay. say that I have. <laughs> all right. So we got the, the apples here. And even though we have this on it. The, oh, the stickers? Yeah, it'll, it'll take it right off by itself. You don't have to worry about it. So you won't be eating the sticker. Normally you stand up, but I want to want you to see all of this. So these proof, putting right in. The red grapes have a a calming effect on your system. You don't want to give your kids or grandkids uh, white grapes. You want to give them red grapes at night. Oh, okay. Evening, because it'll help calm them down and help them sleep. Now you're putting the stems and everything stems in Stems and there. all. Wow. Now you can't do this with every juice, so don't get too excited about that. Okay. So in other words, the one I have at home will not do this. More than likely it won't. <laughs> I'm not going to do all this fruit. Pineapples, fresh pineapples are good for inflammation in your body. Okay. So if you're dealing with inflammation, it's good for that. The oranges, of course, have the vitamin C. The broccoli stem. Okay. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Chef Dennis. Yes. We're going to take a break right now. Okay. Um, this is the Clever Artist Show, and we'll be back in one moment.